Hi stationary friends! Welcome to Ginger Peachy Stationery. My name is Sarah and today I am doing a little stationary fountain pen Q&A. Um, I am pretty excited about it. It's my first Q&A here on my channel. Um, though you know that I am always happy to answer questions and chat about things um, in the comments or on Instagram. Um, but I have, I think, 16 questions. Um, I have taken some little notes. I made them, made little note cards so that I could um, put them in some semblance of order a little bit more easily. I started to do that on my computer and then I was like, hello, this is a fountain pen video. I need to use pens to write my questions and answers, not do it on my computer. So um, I made little note cards and um, some notes. So um, let's dive into it. So these first couple of questions are um, sort of personal questions and I will um, I'm going to give you a short answer to this first one because I really addressed it in my uh, eight pen questions tag video the first question how did you get into fountain pens and stationery when and how did it become big um, so I grew up around fountain pens a little bit because my dad had some Mont Blancs that he used for work but 2015, my boss came into my office, handed me a blue Lamy Safari with brown ink in it. And he was like, have you tried this? Like we were both into stationery. He knew that I liked pens of all sorts and paper and things. And I was like, wow, what is this? And within, I think, a day, I had ordered this neon yellow Lamy Safari and some... J. Urban, Larmes de Cassis ink, and um, I was off. Actually, I think I used this for a little while before I got that ink, but still, those were my first big memories of fountain pens, and I loved it, and from there, it just was a rabbit hole. Um, I did not start off with anything very expensive. I started off with, you know, $5.00 was kind of expensive for a pen. And then, wow, 20, you know, $27 is pretty expensive for a pen. So it was kind of a slow intro, but that was in 2015. So it's been over eight years at this point. And um, so, uh, yeah, that's how I got in. And it got big pretty quickly because I was obsessed with trying inks. And, you know, I was on jet pens all the time. I started listening to the Pen Addict podcast. Um, leave a comment below if you listen to the Pen Addict podcast because I've been listening to it since 2015 and um, I don't feel like I hear people mention it a whole lot but like I know that Brad and Mike have a ton of followers so um, tell me if you are a listener of the <laughs> the Pen Addict podcast because um, I love those guys. So um, anyway that was my dive into fountain pens and I'm one of those people that just very quickly knew this is going to be something I love and I was off. So my second question is what inspired your username? Which is uh, my, I can't remember if this question was from um, Instagram or from YouTube, but, and forgive me if you asked a question, I, um, I had some questions that were sort of similar and I just did not write down everyone's names. So please don't have your feelings hurt that I'm not saying anyone's names. Um, who asked these questions. My username is Ginger Peachy, uh, Ginger Peachy Pins on Instagram, Ginger Peachy Stationery here. Um, I actually have have a another Instagram account where I um, sell some handmade things or I have sold some handmade things and I also use the Ginger Peachy name there. Um, that comes from one of my favorite movies growing up and to this day is Meet Me in St. Louis with Judy Garland and Mary Astor and uh, Margaret O'Brien and a whole host of wonderful um, actors and actresses. Um, I love that movie. And there's a line in there, which I will insert here. How oh, that Welch rabbit was ginger peachy. <laughs> where John Truitt is... Um, at Esther's house for a, a little party and he's he's feeling awkward and he says wow that Welsh rabbit was ginger peachy and I always loved that um, it is not Welsh rabbit though that is what 
people sort of call it, but apparently Welsh rarebit is actually how, what the word is, is like cheese toast. <laughs> so he's telling her that cheese toast was really good. <laughs> so ginger peachy just sort of means like swell or great. And um, I just, I am a happy person. I like happy and bright things. And I am from Georgia. Um, I grew up there. I have lived in Louisiana for most of my life, but um, I'm still originally from Georgia and I'm also a redhead. So Georgia peaches, they call redhead gingers, which I have never really liked being called a ginger. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I never liked that growing up and then started hearing people say things about gingers not having souls and I was like what because I don't like I mean obviously that's not true but like I don't like people saying that that's not very nice so I love being a redhead and I'm starting to accept the um ginger designation in the nicest way so <laughs> ginger peachy is just um happy and light and I just like it so that's where my username comes from. Um, so next I thought I would jump into, I'm going to call these superlatives. My whole last video was my fountain pen superlatives, but these are superlatives questions because it's best and worst and oldest and biggest and those kinds of things. So best and worst ink I've tried. Um, the worst ink I've tried is a pretty easy one. It is J. Herbon Café de Iles, and I might not be saying that right, forgive me. Um, and also, I did not pull out every everything I was going to show you, so I might be reaching for some things. This ink is a great color. I like warm browns, but it's like gooey. I don't know. I didn't like it. I don't like how it was flowing in my pen. Other people told me that they also did not have a good time with it. You see how it's kind of patchy? Like every other ink in here comes out so much smoother than this one does. And the one that I have compared it to is Monteverde Pumpkin Cake. It's a similar color. And can you see just how much smoother it looks on the card than this one does? So that was the worst ink that I've tried. Um, best ink, I'm not going to go with one particular ink, really, because there's another question later about my favorite inks. But the best inks that I've tried as a whole are Pilot Orochizuku inks. Um, in my opinion, Orochizuku inks are some of the very best. Um, I've never had one disappoint me. The colors are always good. They're always wet enough. They usually don't bleed and feather very much. Very well behaved inks. They have some really good colors. They don't have 800,000 colors like some brands do, but the ones that they have are really good in my experience. I haven't tried them all, but um, if you're having a pen that you're just like, I'm not loving you know, how the inks are working in this, give an Orochizuku ink a try. They are not cheap. I only own three bottles of Orochizuku inks. Three or four? Three. Um, because they're not cheap. And then I have, well, actually I have um, three of these little small bottles. This one was a freebie that I got with a pen that I bought, but um, I have three of these too. So they're not cheap, I know, but if you can f get a couple of samples and find a couple of colors that really... Um, work for you that you really like, these are worth it in my opinion because they are excellent. Kujaku is a new favorite of mine. <laughs> I'm really liking that ink. Um, and I will also add that Waterman inks, one of my top favorite inks of all time is Waterman Inspired Blue. And I don't know if you can see this, but this ink is only full to about here when it's standing up. So I've used most of this bottle of Waterman Inspired Blue. Um, it's a great brightish blue. You might be able to kind of see that in the bottle. I'll show you the card. Um, it's an excellent, 
brightish blue and it has some red sheen which sheen is not always my favorite but it's not too much it's not a heavy sheening ink it's a similar color to um Eroshizuku Konpeki and I'm gonna find it for you um similar not the same but similar color family yeah pretty similar anyway Waterman inks every Waterman ink that I have tried has been really good mysterious blue uh oh serenity blue um I think I also have used tender purple and I don't know why I don't have it in here um but anyway waterman inks are great and I will also throw in diamine I um really like pretty much every diamine ink I've ever tried there are just a couple that it's like eh but they're still well behaved they're lubricated enough that they flow well and um even diamine shimmering like I've used a couple of shimmering inks and they work really well in my opinion so Eroshizuku, Waterman, Diamine, you know, are some of the best inks that I've tried. What is the oldest stationary product that you still use today? Two things I thought of. One of them is uh, very simple and it is just a journal. I have been a journaler since I was about um, five and I was going to get my journal out, <laughs> my diary from when I was about five out to show you, but it is in the top of a closet, in a box that's got things piled on it. And um, I'm sorry, I'm digging out, digging around in a drawer here. Um, you know, it's in the, in the top of a closet. Anyway, I just couldn't get to it very easily. And so I'm not showing you my childhood journal today, but I am still a journaler this many years later. Um, I have rarely taken a break from journaling. The other thing is the Pilot Better ballpoint pens. I have loved these since I was a kid. This happens to be a purple one. Most of the ones that I've had in my life are either black or blue. And um, these, like, they're just ballpoints, but they make that little tap, tappy sound. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear it. They make that little tappy sound on your paper, <laughs> and I love that. And, uh... Yeah, so that's my Pilot Better ballpoint pens and journals are my two longest lived stationary products that I still use. Today I use a Hobonichi Cousin as my journal and um, I have a video early on in my channel where I talk about how I journal in a Hobonichi Cousin, but I use every section of the Cousin um, in my journaling process. So I can talk more about that if, you're, if anybody's interested, but um, so just let me know. What pen is your biggest joy? This was a, this is kind of a hard question. What pen is your biggest joy? And two of them, I don't know, three of them came to mind. There's another question later that's kind of similar. So these will all come up. This uh, Monte Grappa Elmo Marshmallow brings me so much joy. I've told this story a bunch of times, but I missed this release. And I just threw it out on Instagram stories. Hey, does anybody want to sell me yours? Like two years after it was released. And there were only like 99 of them made. And a pen friend reached out and said, Hey, I'll sell you mine. Because she was wanting to get the recycled um, resin version. And she sold it to me for a good price. And I have loved and adored it. Um, that pen has seen more use than any pen in my collection. As far as the number of times it's been inked. Um... I just noticed in my ink journal a little while ago that this pen has been inked with like seven different ink colors and pretty much has not gone uninked for more than just a couple of weeks at a time since I've had it about two years. Um, the other one is this SD Candy. This Esterbrook SD Oversize in Candy is a delight. Can you see the sparkles? This one I purchased from Dan at the Nibsmith and I saw this one in his pictures and I said can I have this pen like not one of these this one and he found it for me and sold it to me I love it because of all this pink on this side and the big gold swirl here is like a little backwards s for Sarah you know <laughs> um 
it is just perfect. I did drop it on the concrete like not long after I got it outside and put some little nicks in the clip. But hey, that's okay. Not the end of the world. It's still such a beautiful pen. And I don't know. Does anybody know if Esterbrook would replace a clip if I asked them to? I don't know. I imagine that they might. So those are two of my biggest joy pens um, in my collection. Biggest pen regret is the next question, um, which could be something I bought and regretted buying or something that I didn't buy. Um, one regret is selling my Woodshed Pen Co. pen in the shimmering purple. <laughs> um, I have backed that pen on Kickstarter and I had it for a while and for whatever reason I wasn't reaching for it. Now I think I know that it was because of the... Oh, excuse me. Now I think I know that it was because of the broad nib. I have not been into like really broad, smooth nibs. And I think that's why I let it go. And that's such a silly reason because I have other Jovo nibs I could have put in it. And I think I would have used it because I have three other woodshed pins, including this Calico one. And I love it. I love it so much. Um, and I just really wish I had not let go of that shimmering purple one. So if you have a shimmer purple pen and you decide you uh, would like to sell it, you know, hey, let me know. <laughs> um, another regret is buying the SD, Esterbrook SDJR. I had the Blue Breeze one. It's super cute, but not comfortable for my hand. And I couldn't post the cap, which was kind of annoying to me. The one that I got didn't have a great nib. And then I went to sell it and nobody would buy it from me. I kept dropping the price and I think I sold it for like $60 or something. That was a regret. Waste of money. Um, the yellow vanishing point. I had the like standard yellow pilot vanishing point. I can still get them now. And, but I sold that one and multiple times I wish I have wished that I still had it. So I may pick one of those up again at some point because that yellow was just so great. And um, at the time, I didn't love the fine nib. And now I think I would appreciate the fine nib more. So, and then my last regret, I'm going to say, is just all the metal pens. The pens with metal sections. Like, I had a couple of Visconti's. I had some Karis Customs pens. Um, they were wonderful pens. I just don't like metal grips. And so, I've ended up selling all of those pens over time. Um, I was looking at my inventory and I have sold somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 pins over the last five or six or seven years so um and a lot of those were metal grips and things so um I just kind of regret spending money and then you know you don't get all your money back when you sell them um so which pen out of your collection has the smoothest nib compared to others, or which pens have the smoothest nibs. Um, I'm going to say Banu pens have some of the smoothest nibs, and they are just Schmidt nibs. And here's what I'm, I've am i remembered. Caveco uses Schmidt nibs, right? At least they used to. Maybe they've switched at this point. Caveco used to use Schmidt nibs, and they were notoriously not great. So I think Bennu must do a lot of in-house work on their nibs because they are all wonderful. I have I have several Bennu pens. One of them came in with a nib that I needed to smooth out a little bit myself. But the ones that all the other ones have been like ridiculously smooth. I had a Bennu Briolette for a while. I did let it go. Um, not because of the nib, just because of the pen body. I just wasn't reaching for it. But um, that broad nib was the smoothest, butteriest nib I have ever used. And I had a shimmer ink in it. And it's still just like, it was like glass. It was wonderful. Um, I also think uh, Pilot medium and broad nibs um, like this, uh, this Custom 74 with a medium nib. Um, I've got another Pilot gold nib. Um, and abroad, they are smooth as butter. I mean, they are just wonderful. Pilot gold nibs, which pilot all pilot nibs generally are really good. Even they're fine. You know, I'm actually going to say I think I prefer pilot fines 
to be steel nibs over the gold ones that I've tried. Personal preference, I like the hardness for the fine nibs. For the mediums and broads, the softness of the gold makes them so smooth and buttery is the only word that I have. Um, I also just really like a really good tuned Jovo stainless steel nib. Um, quite a few of my pens have Jovo nibs that I have bought from Kirk Spear at Pen Realm or from, you know, different people. Did I put one in this one? I think so. And it is just a super well-tuned Jovo broad or medium or fine nib is wonderful. So yeah, I think you can get um, smooth nibs anywhere. And there are certain brands that are notorious for being feedbacky. I uh, know it's not a word, but like Sailor nibs, they're always going to have some feedback, you know? Um, both of the, of the Le Bon pens that I've used have some feedback. Um, all of my platinum pens, uh, gold nibs, all have some feedback. Um, actually, my my broad gold platinum nib is one of the smoothest in my collection, actually. But so, you know, I guess brands do a lot of their own in-house tuning. I don't know, to make them more or less feedbacky based on their preferences. So anyway, uh, my Lamy 2000, that was another one I wrote down. Um, my Lamy 2000 had an amazing fine nib on it. Um, then someone picked it up off my desk and used it and she destroyed it. And I sent it off to Dan Smith, the nib smith, and he fixed it for me back when he was accepting uh, repairs. He's not really doing that right now, but um, he made that the best nib. All I asked was for him to straighten it out and like tune it up. He didn't do any kind of grind on it or anything. It was so smooth. So if you can get a good Lamy 2000, it has an excellent nib. All right, so moving on to favorites. My favorite nib type and why. This answer is really boring, <laughs> but I like medium nibs. I like regular medium nibs. I have a ton of medium Jovo steel nibs. And um, I have a lot of fines, I have some broads, but medium is my jam. It's just, it's fine enough to work on cheaper you know paper and not feather too much it's broad enough to show some of your ink properties um you know they just they work in most situations and so medium regular round nibs i will say i have not tried very many like special grinds i have one franklin Kristoff with a medium italic stub Stub I tout. Anyway, it's a Masayama, Mike Masayama grind on it. And I do like to use it. It feels a little sharper, you know, but it's a very small stub. I don't love regular stub nibs. Uh, 1.1, like I don't, I just don't. I don't know why. I just don't. You, I would think that I would, but I just don't. Um, so, yep, regular, medium. I do want to try some other things. I have not ever even tried an architect or... I want to try them, but I have been hesitant to buy one in case I don't like it. I don't want to have purchased it and now be, you know, stuck with it. I think I would enjoy it for short stints, though. Favorite ink that you've tried? I did not answer this question <laughs> because I have so many favorite inks. At this moment, my favorite ink is Diamine Deep Magenta. This is such a good color, and uh, I'm so grateful that Simona sent me this ink. I'm also really enjoying wearing ghoul, a star spattered hill, like, which is a shocker because I don't use yellows very much. Um, another favorite is, um, Monteverde Gratitude, very similar color to that one. I love my Pelican inks, um, Pelican Star Ruby. Let's see. Star Ruby is a wonderful reddish pink. Um, I love Roar and Klingner. Um, Cassia is a great purple. I love my purple inks. Um, Erosha Zuku. Um, Murasaki Shikibu is one that I have used over and over and over. That's one of the bottles I showed you. 
such a good purple ink. Um, J. Airbon Larmis de Cassis is one that I've had for many years and have, it's the first bottle of ink that I used up. I love this ink. It's a lighter ink compared to some of these others, but I love it. Um, I have loved um, Lamy Dark Lilac. Sorry, it's a really hard one to find, <laughs> but a good one. Uh, some Monteverde inks. I know I mentioned Gratitude, but um, most of the Monteverde inks I've tried have been really good. Um, Monteverde Key Lime Pie is one that I really like for a bright green. Um, let's see, Papier Plume makes really good inks. Um, I, I like all of my Papier Plume inks. Caramel is one that I use frequently. Um, Papier Plume, where is it? Bayou Nightfall is a wonderful like grayish, greenish, bluish, tealish color. <laughs> um, Papier Plume, if you have not tried Papier Plume inks, I highly recommend it. Same for Pelican Edelstein inks. Um, Sailor, like everybody loves Sailor, you know, they're good. And I have a couple of favorite Sailors. Fuji Sugata is one that I love. I love Sailor Manyo. Um, Nakoya Nagi, a favorite. And Schaefer Script Peacock Blue. I have the vintage packaging here. I have like one and a half bottles of this that I have bought online. And it is the best. And they like there's not a dupe for it i have <laughs> there is not one like they say that waterman inspired blue is similar it is similar but not the same it is just very hard to find a dupe for this so that's some of my favorite inks i love color i like saturated inks i don't love shimmers i don't love heavy sheeners i like shading inks um yeah favorite three inks to pair with oh excuse me, to pair with extra fine nibs. This was hard because I don't use a lot of extra fine nibs, <laughs> but um, uh, the three that kind of I thought about, I have a couple of Kaveco Sports that are fine nibs. They're not extra fine, but they're very fine nibs um, that I love the Kaveco blue cartridges in. Like I just use that blue. It's great. It works really well in those and I just refill them. Um, one of my custom 823s is a Pilot um, Fine Gold Nib, which would be like a Western Extra Fine, basically. And in this one, I have Diatramentis uh, Violets, which is a scented ink. And that's actually one of my favorite inks I should have shown you. I should have shown you Diamine Marine is a favorite ink. Um, but Diatramentis violets come on violets it's a scented ink but it's a dark a deep dark purple um love 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 that for this super fine nib um and yamabudo i have had pilot eroshizuku yamabudo in a fine fine nib i can't I can't think and talk at the same time here. Um, I've had it in an extra fine uh, Twisby Eco. Yeah. And you don't see the sheen much in, you know, an extra fine nib. But this is a really great, well-flowing, really good ink for extra fine nibs. I'm sorry I don't have a better answer for this. I just don't use a lot of extra fine nibs. But um, look for saturated inks that will show up. You don't want to use any of these like really popular right now. Those really fine, uh, light colored like um, Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose. I was really excited to try that ink and then I was really disappointed in how it looked on the paper because it's just so light. It's a really beautiful color but like don't put that in your extra fine nibs. Um, I'm sorry I don't have a better answer for that. Favorite pen and or brand in your collection. Um, 
So one of my favorite pens, I showed you these two, the Candy and the Elmo are two of my most favorite pens. Um, my Pilot Vanishing Point in the 2011, this is before I was into fountain pens, Pilot Vanishing Point, um, limited edition, it was the 2011 edition pink. This is one of my, this is maybe my favorite pen, along, maybe along with this Elmo, but um, I'm going to go with this. It comes to mind, you know, at the very top. So I love this. I don't actually, like, I do enjoy using this pen, but I don't have the urge to have a ton of vanishing points because it's not always the most comfortable pen to use for every situation. I don't want to use it all day, every day. Um, it's not uncomfortable for me, but the clip being right here, just I don't want to use it all day, every day. It is an exception to my metal pen rule. I think probably because it has this good coating on it. So my, you know, you're not touching metal here. I don't know. It's a different pen than most pens with metal grips. But um, yeah, I think this is probably my favorite, my favorite pen. Um, and as far as just like style of pen, I think my favorite has to be the Estherbrook SD. Um, I love the, the shape of this. It's the right length. It's comfortable unposted. It's comfortable posted for me. I, I sometimes like that back weight. Um, usually their nibs are really good. I've had a couple of duds, but the grip is comfortable. It's got a good little flare right there to keep your fingers in the right place, but it's not too much to be sharp. Um, I like them. Like There's a couple of the colors that have come out that I don't love. I don't own every SD that's been released but I have several I think I have seven or eight SDs um, I might want the botanical gardens before too long I don't know but it can wait because it's not limited but um yeah I think the SD like I look for cigar shaped pins um, like they catch my eye a lot which is kind of surprising because in the beginning I thought they were just boring looking but truthfully, flat top pens, even though I do adore like my woodshed pens and my like my little pen designs, pen is flat, you know, top and bottomed. There are pens that I love that are flat, top, flat bottomed, but they're still not my favorite shape, you know? My favorite shape is cigar shaped pens. So that's favorite pens. Favorite ink and pen combination. Okay, this was a hard question, people. <laughs> Thank you for the question. I'm not. I'm not throwing you shade, but this was a hard question. Favorite ink and pen combination. One of them is this uh, Banu Talisman in Ice and Snow um, from Gold Spot with the Scrip, Schaefer Scrip Peacock Blue. This is just like a perfect match. I don't know if that's going to show up well, but in this nib, it was like, oh wow, these were made for each other. <laughs> Cause this is just a really good like put it with this and it seems like an icy blue you know um put it in another pen and it seems like a summer blue so um the sd candy um and colorverse girls just wanna this is probably the pen and ink combo that i have done the most times these go so well together um yeah this, I really like this pink a lot. It's a great bright pink. I don't know if it's going to come across on the screen as bright as it is in person. Um, let's see, what else did I write down? My SD in Honeycomb, which I don't have right now because uh, Simona is borrowing it from me. But um, it is the same color as Papier Bloom Caramel. I mean, it's not. Like, it's not, you know, it's, it's like this. It's crackly. What's the word? I don't know. It's this kind of resin. Um, what are you doing? Sorry, dog. I don't know what dog is doing. Um, anyway, this is such a good match for the Poppy Plume. No, for the uh, SD and Caramel in Honeycomb. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, that most of the time that I've had that pen, it has had this ink in it. Um, only once, I think, did I even put anything different in there. Um, Pelican... Uh, Edelstein Star Ruby. I told you that's one of my favorites. Put this, this ink in. Uh, I know this is going to be a really big surprise to you. But put that ink in the Pelican 
star ruby pin. Uh, and they are a match made in heaven. Um, the pen is a little darker, yes, than the ink, but still, I think this is the only ink that has ever been in this pen. And I do have this pen in a broad nib, and this color just comes out. It's very shading, very shady. <laughs> it's a high shading ink, and I love it in this pen. Um, and, oh, this, uh, per 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 Perkio, Caveco per Perkio, that's why I got this one out. With that Monteverde Key Lime Pie. I don't know what it is about it, but I've put that ink in here like three times and I just like it. I just like it. This is in the color Peony Blossom and put that green in there and it's just like a flower. I don't know. I just like it. <laughs> so that's a pairing that I like. So um, there are a lot of pens that can answer this question because I do a pretty good job and not to toot my own horn here I do a, I, I enjoy finding the perfect matching ink or complementary ink for a pen um Larmes de Cassis Airbon from Airbon is this color like it is this color so I love to put that ink in this pen you know I, I enjoy matching this um Elmo has had a blue ink that matches the blue. I've had a pink ink. I've had a lime, a light green ink that matches this. You know, I could have just put all kinds of colors in here that match all the different colors in this pen. And I love doing that. So, so really I can answer this question with, yes, I love, <laughs> I love ink and pen combos. <laughs> I love matching and coordinating ink and pen combos. Okay, just uh, four more questions and they should be pretty quick. Um, if you could design a pen with Banu or another brand, what would it look like? So I like Banu pens. I like um, the sparkles. I like the bright colors. And they use a lot of really bold colors. Um, they have not had a lot of pastels. One exception being this spring collection from a couple years ago. Um, I would like to see a talisman in pastel shimmery colors so like this pen you can see this the white is shimmery whereas this one um oh bleh, sorry reaching this one is all opaque you know pink and white but if they could use shimmery pastel colors and do sort of a rainbow swirl but in like lighter pastel -y type colors i would love that and then throw in some some glitter like this. I love this glitter with the stars. I think it's just gorgeous. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. Um, or I think it would be really cool to do a landscape. Maybe to take like this Euphoria and have like some green down here, some grass, put some little white <laughs> sheep <laughs> in it, some blue sky, some white fluffy clouds. You know, like I think that would be really cool. So maybe have like a dark sky with some stars at the top, but make it like a um, a landscape from bottom to top. Um, Banu, if you make that, I'll know you got the idea from me. <laughs> so, those are my two ideas that I came up with uh, in the last few days when I was thinking about this question. You can only have one pen for the rest of your life. What is it? I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> uh really and truly if I'm only going to have one pen for the rest of my life like it's probably going to need to be a ballpoint because you can use that everywhere but I mean if we're talking fountain pen like I know it's probably not meant to be a practical question it's going to be one of these it might be an SD you know in general I like SDs um might not be this one because the oversize is kind of unwieldy sometimes you know um I do like it it's it is comfortable but you know, might be the standard size SD. It might be this pink vanishing point specifically, but not any van, not just any vanishing point. Um, I don't know. I mean, I love this pen, but like, it's maybe not my most favorite pen body. I don't dislike it at all. Like, it's not like I don't dislike it at all. But you know, I think the SD is my favorite pen shape. So that might have to be what it is. And uh, maybe if I could get this one, but to look like this, 
um, maybe, maybe that would be it. Um, I also thought of the Pilot Custom, excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm like hiccuping. The Pilot Custom 74 would not be a bad option. It's a great lightweight pen, it's got a great smooth nib on it, yeah. Um, what would you consider your grail pen if you had to pick one? I do have one of these. It is a Mont Blanc, Patron of the Arts, Catherine the Second, the Great, Catherine II, the Great pen. It is a burgundy colored pen with a gold overlay. Um, it's so beautiful. I don't know why I'm so drawn to it. It's just so, it's so beautiful to me. That is my grail pen. I am not, um able to afford it just every day but I'm not discounting the fact that there might come a day that I might be able to get one so we shall see but that is my grail pen last question Edison pens that you've owned um someone just asked me have you owned any Edison pens or do you have plans to get any and what do you think so I have owned three Edison pens these two are both the Edison Nouveau Premier um which was a Goulet pens exclusive shape. I'm not sure if they still have any of these or not. This one was a special edition. It's 2016 spring. It was called Water Lily and then everyone also called it Unicorn Poop. This one is called Cherry Blossom. Um, it was a limited one. I want to say in like 2014 or so but then they re-released it later and that's when I got it. It's called Cherry Blossom. Um, I like these a lot. Um, I also owned an Edison Collier in Rock Candy, and I liked that one, but I sold it because I was, the material was really pretty, but once I had it in my hand, I was like, it's not so, it's not me. It's not as me as I thought it would be. It was a little too red for me. I'm not very much a red person. Um, and really, like, looking back, I knew that before I got it, but I just got excited and bought it anyway. It was a comfortable pen to hold. What my one thing I will say, I don't want to talk negatively about Edison because that this is my only experience and many people have loved Edison pens for a long time. So, um they, they've been they're one of the they're one of the oldest like small maker companies. So, I certainly do not want to speak poorly of them having only owned 3 pens. What I will say is all three of the ones that I've owned dry out kind of quickly. Like, I just feel like the, the ink doesn't stay in the converter as long as I think it should. Um, yeah, and these are very comfortable. The, the sections are a little small, but, you know, they have different pens. Like, that's, they have different options that are not as small of a section as this. It's not uncomfortable, but it's just not my most comfortable pen to use. However, the length, the length is really good and it, I can even kind of post it and I like this really long um, pen in my hand. It's a number six Jovo nib. Nothing to complain about there. But both of these pens, at some point ink escaped from the nib and I got ink in this little uh, crack, like around the top of the cap. So you can see, I mean, this was probably, I can't remember what ink it was. It was a probably Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel, honestly, because it looks kind of like a magenta color. And if you look inside the cap, it is clean. You can't see that probably. It is clean inside that cap. Like there's not a drop of ink in there, but it just stays right here. And I have soaked these. I have put them in my ultrasonic cleaner and just can never get all that out. Like usually I'll get just a little tiny bit of pink in the water and I just can't get it all out. The same thing with this one. This one, just in the last few months, I inked it with Waterman Inspired Blue, which is a really well-behaving ink. I've never had it stain anything else, but it got into the cap just a little bit. Like it wasn't pooled in the cap. It wasn't like it all leaked out, but just a little bit got in there and the inside of this is like a rough texture. It's not smooth on the inside. So when the nib would touch, like when I would go to screw it, if the nib touched the inside wall, can you see how it like left blue in there? And 
see if I can put something white behind it, if you can see it. It left like a blue stain in there and I can't get it out. Like it's, it's, it has stained that rough inside of this pen. And the same thing up around the top, it has that blue in there. And like the pen itself didn't seem to leak, you know, like, I just don't know. I don't know why it does this. Um, it seems like they dry out kind of quickly too. And the same thing with the collier. I felt like I couldn't leave ink in it for more than about three or four days and it was dry. I mean, it wasn't completely dry, but like the nib would be dried out. I would have to prime the nib again to get it going. And then the ink just didn't last in it. So my experience with Edison's has not been thrilling, but I would, you know, implore you to go and watch some other videos, read some other reviews about Edison pens because they are really well made in my opinion. Like they're beautiful. They use beautiful materials. They've been doing this a very long time. So like I said, I don't want to complain about them. Um, maybe I just, it's just, maybe it's had something to do with me, uh, user error in some way. I don't know, but, um, right now I'm holding on to these because I just really like how they look. And I've pulled them out a few times to start to sell them and then just have said, no, I'm just not ready to sell them. So they're here. Um, anyway, this has been question and answers with Sarah of Ginger Pinchy Pens. We are at 46 minutes and 30 seconds. And thank you for sticking with me if you're still here. Um, leave any comments that you have thought of. Um, and we can have some conversations. If you have some questions for another Q&A, keep an eye out and I'll do another post at some point. Or you can leave questions um, under this video. And if you like, if you want it to be for the next Q&A time, then say, hey, for the next Q&A, here's my question. Otherwise, feel free to ask any questions and we can discuss them in the comments. But if you want me to talk about it in another Q&A video, then make sure you say that. So I um, hope that makes sense. Um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you and I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.